Friday afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Mammoth Digital Network pregame show as we prepare you for Saturday night's men's soccer championship between the Mammoth Hawks and the Hawks of Pride. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Dan Uzerski. My co-host is Maraid Spellacy. Maraid, these two teams both tied for the regular season championship, and now this one is for who goes on to the NCAA tournament. And these two teams have quite a matchup history, dating all the way back to 1993, but Monmouth is yet to win a game against Hofstra. Hofstra 6-0-1 against Monmouth all-time. Let's take a look at the all-time series. They did match up during the regular season on October 7th. This was a real battle for both the teams, and Monmouth played great defense in this game. Both teams had great chances, but it wasn't until 4 minutes and 30 seconds left of the game that Elliot Goldbrock was able to get the goal for Hofstra. And as you mentioned, um, as we talked about, their first ever matchup was 1993. Over a course of seven games, Hofstra leads 6-0-1, and this is the first CAA postseason matchup between Hofstra and Monmouth. You mentioned both of these teams. It's their first CAA postseason matchup. It should be a good one. This is going to be their eighth matchup, and this one being for all the marbles. Let's take a look at Hofstra's last game of 4-1 victory over Delaware on Sunday. They played, as you said, Delaware on Sunday and won 4-1. to one. This was a really dominating game for Hofstra offensively. Uh, Ryan Carmichael made the first goal of the game off of a rebound from Teddy Baker's shot for his 13th goal and 43rd of his career. He then struck again at uh, 28 minutes and 22 seconds when he received a pass from Rock Carls, giving Hofstra the advantage 2-0. to zero. As we see here, Hofstra made another amazing goal. Um, just before halftime, time, Shane Solom made his way down the sideline and to the goal with just 24 seconds left in the half. Uh, the second half, 20 minutes into it, Albert King scored for Hofstra's fourth goal after several passes. Um, and with two minutes and 30 seconds left to play, Delaware got its first goal, but was not able to come back and Hofstra came away with the win. As we take a look here at the stats, Hofstra really dominated 17 shots, seven of them on goal, as Delaware has three shots and one on goal. Delaware did get Hofstra in saves, uh, but considering the amount of shots that Hofstra has, that's pretty self-explanatory. This score definitely is going to come as a shock to certain people because Delaware actually handed Hofstra one of their two conference losses during the regular season. Now, to see Hofstra dominate the way they did on Sunday really shocked, I think, a lot of people. But from five goals in the Hofstra game to zero goals in Monmouth's penalty kick win over Elon on Sunday. Yeah, definitely a big difference between these two games, but Monmouth did win in penalty kicks 4-2. to two. A lot of chances and shots for both Elon and Monmouth, but the goalies for both teams played a really big role, making so many saves. There was no goals in regulation, so one overtime was then sent to two overtimes, was then sent to penalty kicks. Ben Zikowski made the first shot for Monmouth, and Elon missed their first shot, excuse me, um, off the goalpost. Adrian Ro Rosseth was able to make Monmouth's second goal to make the advantage 2-0. to zero. In the third round, both Elon and Monmouth both missed, unfortunately, but Ollie Brorson was able to make the record 3-1 to one for the Hawks, and Elon made theirs in the third round, making it 3-2. to two. Demora then made Monmouth's last goal to give them the win. Yeah, not many times you see a goalie go out there and make a penalty kick to win you the game. But not only that, look at the celebration after on the screen. That's what head coach Ron McCourt said was as, as electric of an atmosphere as he's ever seen, especially considering where the Hawks were last year to where they are now. Absolutely. And as we take a look at the stats, as I mentioned before, a super even matchup, 10 for Monmouth, 10 for Elon, four shots on goal for Elon, and five for Monmouth. Um, even as we look at the saves, five and four, really even matchup. You mentioned, Maraid, a really even game between both of these teams. And Elon definitely didn't look like a 16, beating Stony Brook and then barely losing to Monmouth in penalty kicks. Got to give credit to both of those teams for really fighting hard on Sunday. Now, both the Hofstra and Monmouth are in the CAA championship. Let's take a look at the roads that these teams took to this championship, starting with Hofstra. What's interesting about Hofstra is they've been in the CAA since 2001, so the competition in this league is no surprise to them, and they've been to the CAA championship game 11 times, 11 appearances in CAA championship games, and they've won nine. So from a team with so much experience to Monmouth doesn't have that much experience, it's going to be a really interesting game for these two teams. You mentioned, let's take a look at Monmouth's road to the championship. Now, they last faced Elon, and 
between, you know, all-time series between Monmouth and Elon. Monmouth had not beat Elon in the past, so this was a very big game for them. And when we talked to Coach, he said that, you know, as we say, this is only their second year in the CAA, um, but they've made it this far because of the culmination of their work, and Coach thinks that this really shows that. Both of these teams have been in championships, even if it's in different leagues. When we get back, we'll take a look into the teams and a look into the impact players when we get back here on the Monmouth Digital Network preview show. I'm the director of the Cancer Center, designated by the National Cancer Institute. We are here to make an important distinction. There are cancer centers. And there are NCI-designated cancer centers. Recognized for world-class research. And positive impact on their communities. No single person is going to cure cancer. It'll take a team effort. That's what an NCI-designated cancer center is all about. In New Jersey, there's only one. Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, together with RWJ Barnabas Health. Elevate how you hydrate and keep it smart with smart water alkaline. Greatness never settles. That's why the Monmouth University Hawks drive World Subaru, the number one Subaru retailer in all of Central and South Jersey. Visit World Subaru today. Proud sponsor of the Monmouth University Hawks or online at worldsubaru.com. Go Hawks! Getting that perfect slice is satisfying, fulfilling, and rewarding too. But we don't do it for fun. We do it for fresh. Slice to order makes a sub above. Welcome back to the Mammoth Digital Network pregame show as we continue to get you ready for Mammoth and Hofstra's championship bout. Now, Maria, Hofstra is ranked number eight in the country in terms of RPI, ahead of teams like North Carolina. Now, one of the biggest reasons that they are ranked as high as they are is their two superstar players, the first one being Elliot Goldthorpe. Elliot Goldthorpe, the junior from the United Kingdom. This is his second season at Hofstra, and just last year, his first season was an amazing season for him. He had 17 goals and six assists. He was the United Soccer Coach's second team All-American, first team All-CAA selection, and he was the CAA Most Outstanding Player. Just this year, he has seven goals, making 24 goals in his career, and 18 assists with 66 points, and he leads the team, the CAA, and the nation in assists, which is pretty incredible. And as we take a look here at his stats for this year, he is the CAA Player of the Year with seven goals and 12 assists, and seven of those goals are for game winning goals. You mentioned the 12 assists. Now, you need to have someone, a partner in crime, a running mate to be able to set up, and their running mate is Ryan Carmichael. Ryan Carmichael, the senior from Northern Ireland, had a great game just last matchup where he had two goals to send Hofstra to the championship game. Now this season, he has a total of 14 goals and 43 overall, and if he gets that 15th this season, he will tie his record just his sophomore year. He has four assists and 17 total with 32 points and 103 points overall. He's in second place um, for Hofstra career goals and points um, with 43 and 103, as we mentioned. And he is tied for second in the country in points, and he's second behind Ben Zikowski in shots on goal and game winning goals. And as we take a look here, as I mentioned, 14 goals, 32 points, and 14 of those goals are five game winning goals. When you have a season like the one Carmichael had, he probably was shocked that he didn't win CAA Offensive Player of the Year. But that's how good these two players are, Goldthorpe and Carmichael. Now, the man that's going to be tasked with having to stop these two offensive forces 
the Hawks goalie Eric Demore, who just has his seventh shutout of the year against Elon on Sunday. Eric Demora, the redshirt sophomore from Clifton, New Jersey, has accumulated many accolades over the time he's been here at Monmouth, but this year has been particularly special for him um, because of his accolades just this year, and he had a huge game in the semifinals game against Elon as he had as he had four saves, his seventh shutout this season, and scored the final penalty kick to send Monmouth to the championship game. This season, he's faced 188 shots, and because of his efforts, Monmouth is 16th in the country in save percentage. And when we talked to Coach, he really emphasized that on Eric's leadership and that he really is the full package. He's athletic, he's rangy, and he's so technically gifted. As we take a look at his stats, Rob McCourt always raves about him when we talk to him. He really does. We take a look here. He has a record of 8-3-6 with 17 games played. He has an 80% save percentage, and he had the game-winning PK versus Elon, as we talked about. You mentioned Demora being technically gifted, getting that game-winning penalty kick. He's someone that Rob McCourt said is as good as any of the goalies that have ever played in this program. And now we mentioned that Hofstra has great talent offensively. The Hawks have a great player offensively as well. Just as good as anyone on Hofstra and Ben Zikowski. Absolutely. Ben Zikowski, the fifth-year forward from Glen Rock, New Jersey, leads the Hawks with 11 goals and one assist, one assist this season. He's fourth in the CAA in points and ranks second in the CAA for game-winning goals. Uh, just this year, he scored a pair of goals in a game twice and at one point had a four-game four game goal scoring streak Early on, earlier on in the season, and prior to the semifinal game for Monmouth, uh, he had five. He had two goals in their past five games. And when we talked, every time that we talked to Coach, in fact, he just raves about Ben and how important he is to this team and how much he leads leads by example for the younger players on the team. He's such a hard worker. Something that head coach on the court talks about every time we talk about. And it shows in how he's played this year looking at his stats. Absolutely. He's first time all CAA. As we said, he has 11 goals with six game winning goals. That's second in the country and second in the conference as well. Zikowski's been such a great player in his time at Monmouth. And all these players have really been great this year and in their entire careers now. These teams both want to win. They both want to get to the NCAA tournament. That would be such a big thing for both of these programs, especially Monmouth. What are your keys to the game, Marie? So for Hofstra, they're going to want to get the ball to Ryan Carmichael. As we talked about, he has 14 goals this season, 43 overall. And so if they can get the ball to him, there's a very good chance that he can score, especially considering just last game he had two goals. For Monmouth, it's going to be closed down wide spaces. When we talked to Coach, he said that Hofstra really can get those corner kicks, get those free kicks, so they really need to make sure there's no spaces for that opportunity. This game's going to be a great one. Saturday night, under the lights, we're going to see who prevails to get that NCAA tournament appearance. For our entire production crew, for our producer, Andrew Kurtz, for my co-host, Marais Spalacy, I'm Danny Zersky saying thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy the game on Saturday, everyone.